Welcome to Core Kind today for November 5th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of Core Kind right now and give you my opinion on them. Now, this is my opinion. If you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below. There, I'll include a link to each individual story so you can read about them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. We'll love to hear from you. If you are new here, hey, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. We will really appreciate it because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, a lot of news happening right now, including some early Black Friday deals. Uh, starting off with Tableau Duels Light DVR, the uh, over-the-air DVR for your antenna, is on sale now for just $109. This is a really good DVR at a great price. It includes their new automatic commercial skipping feature where in recordings it will automatically skip past your commercials. That is an early Black Friday deal they just announced and started yesterday. Also, if you don't mind having a renewed or otherwise known as refurbished, Amazon calls the refurbished products renewed, Roku Ultra 2018. It's on sale for just $59.99 on Amazon course comes back with Amazon's 90-day warranty. I buy quite a few of these, been very happy with renewed products from Amazon. So link in the show notes down below. Those links help support Corker's news and hopefully these deals help you out. If you find a new deal or a great Black Friday deal that you found coming, go to corkersnews.com and do me a huge favor. Hit the contact us button, send us an email, include the link to the deal if you could. Those help us find some of the great deals we share with our readers here. All right, AT&T's in a little bit of trouble with the FTC. The FTC was investigating AT&T over allegations that misled consumers with its unlimited data and its wireless plans. And AT&T has agreed to pay $60 million that I guess will go back to refunding some customers who were throttled on their unlimited data plans for a set period of time. This was just announced shortly before I recorded this video. Still waiting to hear from AT&T an official statement from them. But the FTC says that um, AT&T must now fully disclose, not hidden behind a link, not in small legalese text, but must prominently disclose any possible throttling and those kind of conditions with their unlimited wireless plans. I get this question a lot like, hey, if I use my AT&T Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone, isn't that unlimited? Can't I use that to stream Netflix, Hulu, and more on my Roku, Fire TV, et cetera. And you can, but you do run the risk that they could say, hey, the network is congested, you're a heavy user, we're going to throw to you. Now the FTC says that AT&T must make that very clear up front and fully disclose it. So I'm kind of interested to see how this all plays out. So uh, it's a fun um, little tidbit here. I wonder how many uh, that other companies also do this. I wonder how many other companies are going to either face a similar one or are going to suddenly rush to try to be very transparent and upfront about possible throttling on their data plans and, and their uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. So let me know if you were affected by this. You may want to read the story down below. I haven't fully learned how they intend to determine who will get any type of refunds because of this. But if we learn more, we'll post it over at corecarsnews.com in the story linked down below. All right, so we have a new study from eMarketer that says um, Roku is once again the most popular streaming player in the United States. I know Amazon's been claiming they have more active users than Roku, but according to eMarketer, here in the United States, Roku is the most popular. Now, Roku and Amazon are not all available in the same countries. Amazon, for example, I believe isn't in Mexico, but Roku is. Amazon's in India, but Roku is not to my knowledge. Roku's been uh, expanding more in Europe recently and they've been expanding through Central and Southern America. So it'll be very interesting to see what this looks like in years to come. Yeah, now Roku will work in other markets. Now, for instance, well, when my wife was in Korea for a while for work, we took a Roku there and just some Roku channels didn't work because they were geo-locked out of Korea. But it worked even though it wasn't officially being sold at the time in Korea. This is more about where they're being sold. And you know, if it's not for sale in your local country, you're probably not special ordering it shipped from America, for example. So with more and more countries having both Roku and Fire TVs, especially in Europe, it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. 
it's definitely a heated battle. For now, Roku has a sizable lead with according to eMarketer, 86.2 Americans having streamed content through a Roku compared to 64.6% of Americans who use a Fire TV. Chromecast is in third place at 31.6 million and the Apple TV is in a distant fourth place. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. We're definitely seeing Roku and the Fire TVs become the two dominant players in streaming media, just as we're kind of switching now to be a smart TV dominated society and core cutting. Now Roku definitely has a huge advantage with smart TVs, but don't count out Amazon. They have new partners. They're expanding in Europe with smart TVs there through running the Fire TV OS. So I will be very interested to see how this plays out in the future. Let me know, does this surprise you that in the United States, Roku has such a substantial lead over the Fire TV, especially over the Apple TV? Or is this what you expected? Do you have a favorite streaming player? Leave us a comment, I'd love to know why also. Why do you pick a Roku, a Fire TV, a Chromecast, Android TV, which didn't pop up on this chart, or an Apple TV? What did you pick and why did you pick it? Let us know. I'd really love to hear from you because this is kind of one of those arguments that's been popping up. A few years ago, I think this was much more important because there was definitely a, hey, this app is on the Fire TV, but not on Roku, and Roku has that, but it's not over here. Increasingly, that's not really an issue anymore because they're pretty much on all of them. So let me know what you think. Let me know um, if this lines up with your thoughts and expectations. All right, Lowcast CEO gave an interview um, this week uh, to a podcast and was talking a lot about Lowcast and their lawsuits and how they got started. And one of the things Lowcast's CEO said was that he wants to expand into more rural America uh, areas. Currently, Lowcast is in majority major cities um, and larger areas, even in North and South Dakota. Uh, but you'll find in places like Dallas and New York and Los Angeles and more, Atlanta and Phoenix being the most recent additions. Now Locast CEO says, hey, we would really like to get into more rural America, which are definitely a lot of places who need a service like Locast a lot more because there are areas who can't get um, over their TV sometimes with an antenna. If you're not familiar with what Locast is, they are a free streaming service that streams locals from an antenna, so ABC, NBC, Fox, a lot of sub channels like MeTV, Comet, and more, free online if you live in the area. Now, they will pester you for a donation if you don't donate, but in theory, you could use it without paying for the donation. You're just gonna see pop-up messages about donations constantly popping up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. He didn't really get much into the lawsuit. Their locast is currently being sued by companies like um, Disney and Comcast and more through their parent through their networks of Fox, ABC, NBC, and CBS. We interesting to see um, how that resolves. For now, though, Locast doesn't seem to be slowing down. So let me know what you think. the The thing with Locast though is they actually have to have a presence in your city, in your market. They actually have to set up an antenna and hardware there, which is kind of expensive. They're a nonprofit. They don't take fees. They take donations. When you do that, money can be tight, money can be slow. So far though, the, the lawsuit's still hanging over their shoulder. Nothing has recently changed with it and we'll kind of keep a close eye on this and how it all develops and how it all goes forward um, in the weeks and months to come. So let me know what you think of Lowcast. Let me know what you think of his idea to expand into more rural America. And I highly recommend you listen to the full podcast. We just covered that one little news bit there. Link in the show, it's down below. All right, Pluto TV today have added five new channels, including a 24 7 um, election 2020 channel. We're a year away from the 2020 election, and Pluto TV now has a dedicated channel to news revolving around the 2020 election. They also have a 24 7 leverage channel, a winter sports channel for all things winter sports. So look for a lot of, I guess, ice skating and um, different winter related sports. Um, Curiosity to Inspire, uh, which is a channel with biographies about inspirational people in the world. So if you're looking to be inspired by somebody's story, that's a great channel, 24-7 free there. And Naruto, I, I, you know, I love anime, but I apologize, I don't know how to pronounce this, N-A-R-U-T-O. 
It is a 24-7 dedicated anime channel there. I know it's a hugely popular show. I have actually not seen it. But great to see Pluto TV adding even more channels. This is on top of the channels they added last week. Added a bunch of Christmas-themed holiday channels. And now we have even more. All right. So check it out. Let me know what your favorite um, Pluto TV channel is there. Sorry about that. I accidentally hit the button there. There we go. That's a lot better. Uh, but let me know what your favorite Pluto TV channel is. I'd love to hear from you uh, what channels you would recommend. Maybe give me an idea of something to try out. All right, AT&T has officially launched NBA TV as an a la carte TV channel. Um, so earlier this uh, year, AT&T uh, AT made NBA TV free through um, their dedicated um, channels here. It's a Turner owned channel, which is parent company is AT&T. In the past, if you wanted NBA TV, you had to get as a core cutter, you had to get something like Sling TV, et cetera, all those services that offered it. Now for $6.99 um, a month, or if you prepay, it brings it down to like five something a month, I believe. You can and, um, get NBA TV, including live games. They're not blacking out the games on it, streaming online. You can bundle that with League Pass, so you can get your out-of-market games and NBA TV there. Unfortunately, um, games that air on like ESPN or TNT are still not included in NBA TV or League Pass, unfortunately. So it's the first major sports channel like this, the dedicated conference, league, whatever you wanna call it, sports network, to go direct to consumers as a standalone package. I know there's other ones out there that have always been free or have a free aspect to them, but to my knowledge, this is the first one and what at and is claiming is a first of NBA TV going direct to consumers with no need for a Sling TV, PlayStation View, et cetera. So great to see that happen. Hopefully more and more of them have, um, continue to come. I've heard that um, MLB TV has been in um, the MLB.TV service, MLB, the network there. Um, but I don't think that was ever officially sold as a separate where you could just get that. So let me know. But it's good to see more and more sports options becoming direct to consumer. Hopefully AT&T Sportsnet becomes direct to consumer. We'll see, reports are that's up for sale right now. So we'll see what they do with it. All right, if you are looking for a prepaid, uh, and let me know, do you plan to subscribe? What do you think of the $6.99 price of NBA TV? I think it's a little high, um, but it's the first one on the market. Hopefully that price falls down to maybe the four buck range, I think will be a little bit more of a convincing price point for a lot of sports fans. Because right now, you know, if you got Sling TV and others, you, get, you can get NBA TV bundled in there when we look at the cost per channel, it's a lot cheaper that way. All right, if you're looking for a prepaid phone plan, um, Visible is Verizon's prepaid direct-to-consumer um, plan. They recently made a lot of news by removing the speed cap on their prepaid plans for 4G. In the past, you were capped at five down internet on many prepaid plans. Um, Visible removed that. Now they're offering group pay and um, plans for multiple people. So. If you, for example, have two people you want on a single plan, brings the price for their unlimited data plan down to $35. Three people brings it down to $30 each. So 30, 30, 30. Or for four people, it's $25 each, which is a really good deal there um, that Verizon's offering. And I believe that includes the uncapped speed. When I didn't see anything in there about that not being included with these plans also. So if you're looking for a prepaid plan, you like Verizon, you just don't like the price, you could maybe check out their prepaid here. Of course, read all the terms, make sure you understand the hotspot limitations and more with it. But link in the show notes down below. Uh, the free service Canopy, which is a service partners with your local library and gives you free access to movies and television shows, has struck a deal with the Sesame Street to bring 24 episodes of Sesame Street to their Canopy Kids section. If your public library offers Campy or Hoopla or another one of these services, highly recommend you check it out. They're commercial free. You're paying for it with your tax dollars. You might as well use it. And they have an app on Roku, Fire TV, and more to watch it. I also love they uh, many of them have audiobooks and uh, ebooks and more available also on top of the movies and television shows. So check out your public library if you have not been using them. Probably one of the best kept secrets in core cutting that I think a lot more people need to take advantage of. 
And of course, you probably know they have DVDs and CDs, but increasingly many libraries also offer a streaming service, whether it be Canopy or Hoopla or one of these others. And now that um, Canopy has um, Sesame Street, it's one more great um, reason to check them out. All right, that's it for today. I hope you all have a fantastic Tuesday. Hopefully it's dry wherever you are. We're kind of a rainy, gloomy Tuesday down here. But that won't stop our core cutting coverage over at corecarsnews.com. A lot of more stories than what I was able to cover here are covered over at corecarsnews.com. So check that out. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And check back tomorrow for more core cutting news, tips, tricks, and reviews. We'll be here every single day, Monday through Saturday, and often even on Sundays with additional videos. Take care, everybody. Be safe. I'll see you tomorrow.